Oh, yes. Welcome back, everyone. Today we're taking a look at the brand new Masters of the Universe Masterverse 40th Anniversary Vintage Style He-Man. This is a very interesting release because it's a Masterverse toy, which is, you know, kind of your higher end, more articulated, Marvel Legends-like variety of Motu figures, but it's done up in the stylings of the vintage Motu toy line. So this seems to be a great release for somebody who likes the old vintage aesthetic of Master of the Universe, but wants a toy that's a little more complex than an Origins figure. That being said, if you've seen my reviews before, you know how this goes. We're going to take a look at He-Man's packaging, then we'll put it up. We'll get a really good look at the figure himself. We'll check out his posability, his accessories. Naturally, I'll be doing plenty of group shots and comparisons today. And then at the end of the video, I'll give my final thoughts. So He-Man comes in your standard size Masterverse packaging. However, the actual print on the box is very different from anything we've seen up to this point. It's made to be a you know more or less recreation, or at least a stylistic recreation of the vintage Master of the Universe toy line. So you get the classic logo down here, you get his name, you get his title. We get our 40th anniversary call-out sticker, which is not unique to this toy, even though this is the only one billed like exclusively as the 40th anniversary figure. Pretty much any Motu figure released this year has that sticker on there. So I know it kind of dilutes this release, but I mean, not significantly. And then here on the top, you get the Masterverse logo, but it's done up in the vintage styling, which I think is really cool. So this is, you know, looking like a really neat set. And I could see a lot of people just wanting to leave this guy in box because he does look awesome like this. And they even do a really great job of displaying him in the box where he's in a very dynamic pose. You can see he's brandishing his sword and shield. And the sword's actually kind of out of his hand, but... You know, kind of looks like he's holding it. You see the axe, you see the extra hands. So they display him very, very well. I like that. Now, I will say this packaging, because it is going for the vintage look, is a little more plain than most Masterverse stuff. There's not pictures of stuff all over the place. Even the sides are just wraparounds of that front design there. So no, you know, portraits or anything. But instead, on the back, we get this. A full, full panel of this just beautiful 80s style He-Man artwork. And I love this. And because he's not being released as part of any particular assortment, you don't have to have things like cross sales or any of that on there. You just get this really nice artwork. You see Castle Grayskull in the background, you get all these planets. And we see He-Man himself, you get Battle Cat looking very ferocious. And then you see Skeletor looking kind of like surprised as if he's trying to hide and then He-Man found him. And then we get this neat little bit of flavor text here that says, 40 years ago, Mattel created Masters of the Universe, a world of space and sorcery, of fantasy and technology, and of He-Man, the hero who inspired children to discover the power within themselves. Whoever wrote that up, I think, did a really good job. I, I Bravo on that. That is a perfect encapsulation of the feel of Masters of the Universe for all those 80 kids growing up. So I really like this. Now, seeing Skeletor and Battle Cat on here does make me wonder if perhaps vintage style releases of those are coming to Masterverse. Now technically there already is a vintage Skeletor being released through this toy line, but he was part of, was it a PowerCon or the, like SDCC exclusive two pack with a version of this He-Man, pretty much the same toy with metallic weapons as opposed to like the flat plastics here. And then Skeletor had a similar treatment of his weapons. I don't know if there's going to be an individual release of that Skeletor. I would think so. I'd be really shocked if they made that toy and just sold him in a two-pack with He-Man, which means if you don't get that, you can only get He-Man in this styling. I'm sure it's coming. They haven't announced anything as far as I know, but I'd be shocked if they didn't release that in just like a regular non-metallic form. And that brings me to the other question of Battle Cat. Now that one, I would say is a lot more iffy. For one, there just is no version of a vintage Masterverse Battle Cat out there. We have the Revelation one, but he's a pretty good far cry from the stylings of the old one. So it could happen, though being a much bigger figure, it's a riskier move on their part. And the Revelation Battle Cat didn't sell very well. That thing shelf form like crazy, so we'll just have to see what they do there. Okay, now we get to see our He-Man figure out of the box. We get all of his accessories right here at his feet. You get his classic axe, his sword of power, 
get his vintage style shield and then two optional hands, a completely closed fist and then the more open hand that comes from the old vintage He-Man toys. So of course that means he comes with two weapon holding hands just attached to his wrist by default. And one of them, the one that traditionally holds a sword, has the hinge going up and down like this that you're seeing more and more often, especially over on like the Marvel Legends side of things. This one's a little more standard where it's got the in and out motion on the wrist. The head is your typical double ball joint. It's got the ball jointed upper torso, universal shoulders, bicep swivel, double elbows, universal wrists, like we just discussed. Got a full waist swivel, universal hips, thigh swivel, double knees, boot swivel, and universal ankles. So, yeah, just what you'd expect, your standard Masterverse articulation. A uh, couple things that are really interesting and unique about this guy. One, obviously, new head sculpt that is supposed to be kind of a halfway point between the vintage look and a more realistic look. He also has an entirely new chest piece, which is much larger than that found on the Masterverse He-Man and, you know, He-Man shaped characters so far. And it goes much more for that classic bodybuilder physique than, I guess, your more just natural muscle monster look that the Masterverse toys have. And I gotta say, for something celebrating the vintage look, it's a good choice. So we see the chest harness, it looks very much like his old one, complete with Templar cross-like design and everything. Now, unlike some other Masterverse stuff, this just has one connection point right here. Just the one tab, just opens up in the back, and then you can just slide this down over his arms quite easily. You don't have to stretch it or anything. And we can see this, the new chest piece. Uh, still without nipples. <laughs> for some reason, He-Man's just not allowed to have nipples at all. Uh, I don't know, it looks very weird. But you can see he really gets that, you know, classic like Arnold Schwarzenegger bodybuilder look and he pulls it off a lot better than your Revelations He-Man, your New Eternia, anyone that's using that body type. Like the chest area always seemed kind of small to me, which by contrast always made their head seem a little bit big. So I think this is a really nice change of pace. Now I don't know how commonly this chest type is gonna be used in the future, or if it's purely just for the vintage release since they're trying to match that more exaggerated proportions from the vintage toys and the origin stuff and all that. Another thing worth pointing out is that his entire body, like where all his skin is showing, is treated to this really nice subtle pressure wash that just gives a little bit of shading and highlights a lot of the curvature and musculature of the character. It looks really good. It helps elevate this toy to looking more like a premium kind of figure, despite the fact that he was still released for just regular Masterverse prices, which is kind of impressive when you consider everything he comes with and just the overall quality. All right now, looking at you know what's changed, what's stayed the same, outside of the chest area, all his other body parts, like bare skin body parts, are the same ones that have been used for all the male Masterverse toys. The wrist guard on this side is the same one that you saw on figures like your Revelation and New Eternia He-Mans. The buckler, or wrist guard, or whatever you want to call it on this side, is a new piece, and it's modeled much more closely to that of the vintage toy than the ones that came on either of the other two He-Man figures. Now here's an interesting bit. So the belt is the same belt that came on the Revelations He-Man, but the woolies or loincloth area is all new. It looks very similar in style to that He-Man, where it's just kind of a, a long mammoth-like fur hanging down. But as we'll see in a moment, the sculpting is actually entirely new. So they really went out of their way to make this look a little bit closer to the smaller woolies, almost you know, wrestler-like speedo of the vintage toys. And then we get down to the boots. The boots are interesting. The top portion of the boots, from like the cuff to the ankle, is just the Revelation He-Man boots. But then the bottom part is new, and it's got that cross stitch like the two straps going across the foot of the boot there that the vintage toy had so they really went out of their way to mix and match parts to what i think is great effect they're kind of just capturing the best design choices from different figures or just where older figures don't provide the aesthetic they're looking for they create new parts so i think it's great i, I think they did a fantastic job there now let's go ahead and put his chest harness back on for a moment if i can there we go. Slide this back on. We want to look at all of his accessories. Now I will say, I like how easy it is to remove this thing, as opposed to messing with like tiny little straps and worrying about stressing them. The downside is it does tend to pop open kind of easily. 
especially when you're like placing the sword or the axe in there. So just be aware you sacrifice some stability for ease of use. Let's get his harness a little centered. All right. So we already saw that he comes with, you know, a weapon holding hand, or really two weapon holding hands. Let's take a quick look at the alternate hands. So pop this off, pop that off. So this is your more classic hand, right? Your vintage style one, where it's kind of doing the karate chop. And this one is just a tightly closed fist. And we've seen these used on other He-Man toys up to this point. We're just kind of recycling them. But I mean, it works, right? He's the same character, so why wouldn't his hands look more or less the same? So, you know, you can have him going weaponless if you want to. Making him punch or just, you know, yeah, exclaim very excitedly. Like with the Origins toys, this open hand on his left arm is ideal for attaching his shield. That remains the case here. Now, the shield is an entirely new piece, and I was kind of surprised. Uh, not only is the actual outer portion that you see new, but even the handle section is new. And you can see it has like a proper round, like grip taped handle instead of like another strap. So it's all unique. And just like the other Revelation He-Man shield, it just slides over the buckler area, over his fingers, and just kind of rests in the palm of his hand like so. So not a super, super tight fit, but not too loose either. Really helps if you get it like in there and there. Now I think you can attach it with the weapon holding hand, but it's kind of hard to do unless you maybe like put it in the hand first and then attach the hand to the wrist and like slide it over. In fact, that might be the better option. We'll get a look at that in a moment. So there's kind of your classic shield holding configuration, which is pretty cool. Now before we put some weapon holding hands back on him, let's check out his ability to store his weapons. So of course you can stick the sword in here, though I believe the blade is a little bit too big up to a point, so it only goes that far. I mean, it looks fine, looks pretty good. This is, for anyone wondering, the same sort of power that came with the new Eternia He-Man. It's just left unpainted this time to look more vintage. And the axe is the same case. It's that really battle damage looking axe that came with new Eternia. And that'll go in there too. It's kind of a tight fit and will tend to pop that clasp open because it pulls on it, but you can get it in there and that also looks really good. So. Fully compatible with his weapons, just like the vintage or origin toys, he has somewhere to put all of his stuff, right? He can hold the shield in one hand, the sword or axe in the other, and then the other weapon just goes on his back. And that's something that he really improves over the Revelation version, who has no sort of hoop or clasp or anything on the back of his harness. Now to be fair, he doesn't have a second weapon, so he doesn't really need that, but it's still a little bit of functionality that would have been really, really easy for them to engineer in there, and they just chose not to. All right, so let's go back to the other hands real quick. I don't normally reverse course on the hands, but it's kind of a unique release. So push this in there until it pops into place. Let's slide this off. Like I said, it's very difficult, if not impossible, to really get the shield over this more closed hand like with it attached. So I would highly recommend getting that hand on the handle first before you even attach it. I think it'll make your life a lot easier. This handle is very soft despite appearances. It's like a very soft rubber, so it bends a lot. So we have to fight with it a little bit. All right, there we go. So we got the hand. Hold on. <laughs> Going the wrong way. Let's try this again. More like this. I am a professional, guys. <laughs> I totally know what I'm doing. All right, there we go. So you get the hand on there. Kind of in the middle, like so. Now let's slide this over so that everything kind of goes the way it's supposed to. Pop that wrist in. I need to slide this over a little more. Come on. Is it in there? I think it's in there. All right. That's a much firmer hold. So despite this not being the traditional hand used to hold the shield, it seems for this particular shield design, it works a little bit better, which Kind of weird, but as long as one of them works okay, I'm not really bothered. All right, now we're gonna hold his sword. And here it is. Now we have our very vintage looking He-Man. Now it's kind of like, it's probably the way you remember the toy from your childhood, because you always remember things as being like bigger than they actually were. And I love it, right? It's a new toy, new engineering and all that. Also with a harness that wants to keep popping off. <laughs> I mostly love it. Except for that part. All right. So 
So like I said, new toy, new engineering, but it just has that feel of the old figures. I mean, really just harkens back to your original 1980s He-Man stuff. So I would say very much like a second coming of the classics line, which really looked to capture that old vintage feel, but update the figures. That's something that Masterverse, it didn't really start out doing, right? It was really entirely focused on Revelation, which had a more cartoony style and made some design changes. They started mixing it up a little bit where you had more uh, vintage looking or like classic looking characters. They did the new Eternia stuff, which had the option of getting something close to the vintage look. But this is the first time they went like full vintage. And I have to say, I think it looks phenomenal. It's very functional, the posability is great, and all the accessories have a place to go, and they work well with the figure. I'm not sure what more you could ask for. I'm very satisfied by what we've seen so far. All right, now here's our first comparison with the very vintage styled Origins He-Man figure, specifically the one with the newly tooled head. It looks a lot closer to the original toy. Now. What's really interesting is while Origins is a line that is made specifically to resemble the old Motu toy line, there are things that this toy does better at looking like the Vintage He-Man than this one. Specifically when it comes to coloration. He uses darker oranges on things like his belt. And you know, even though the braces weren't colored on the original one, you, know, you see it on the shield. So the orange is better. He uses a more reddish brown for the loincloth and boot areas, which does actually match better than the more earthy brown we see here. And whereas this toy has the cuffs of his boots painted yellow, that's actually not a color app you saw in the original toy. The original toy, the boots were all one color like this. So when it comes to the coloration, this guy actually gets a little bit closer than this one. This one is honestly just a little too brightly colored. And they could have fixed that, when they did this, you know, new head retool of the Wave 1 figure, they could have done more than just swap out the head and leave everything else exactly the same. They could have tweaked the color palette and make him look more like the vintage toy. But they didn't. So this guy, just from a chromatic perspective, ends up looking more the part. He also, unlike the Origins toy, has that arm guard on the left arm. For some reason, Origins, probably because they weren't fully committed to the vintage thing yet, and they were also trying to get that uh, filmation influence in there, especially why they designed He-Man's head the way they did. They went for two armbands instead of having that you know, buckler or arm guard on the one arm like the old toys did. And that's something that's carried over to all of the Origins toys. Like instead of changing their mind and you know, just, you know, hey, from this point forward, we're gonna do an asymmetrical arm thing. Nope, they've just, they've run with it. So all the Origins He-Man toys have that, if they have, you know, the token risk card at all. So it's a little weird. Unsurprisingly, this guy comes quite a bit closer in that regard. Now, the one thing that he does not do that this toy does is have the split sword of power. And if you guys are familiar with the old toys or you've, you know, been sticking around my reviews long enough, you know that the old vintage He-Man and Skeletor each came with halves of the power sword. He-Man's being silver, Skeletor's being purple, that could combine into the complete sword. And that was to play into the storyline that was being developed at the time the toys were designed, where you know they hadn't come up with the whole filmation thing yet, and you know He-Man just being the sole wielder of that sword. Uh, it was basically these two sword fighting all the time to claim each other's half, to try to gain like the ultimate power, also use it as the key to unlock Castle Grayskull, which I guess is how they get the ultimate power. So that's one thing that this toy does have, and they did keep intact as a feature. Some people like that, some people don't. I will point out that the newer head version actually came with just a regular complete power sword, but I personally swapped it out for the more vintage one. You do have to do a little bit of mix and matching to get your like perfect vintage Origins He-Man, but I digress. One thing that would have been really cool, now I don't think it would have been a good idea to only give him a half sword. Because, again, we don't even know if we're getting a vintage-style Skeletor in Masterverse. I'm assuming we probably will, but we don't know that. And I don't know if Mattel knew that for sure when they came out with this guy. So it is smart to give him a complete sword and not potentially leave him with just half of a dinky-looking sword. So that's cool they included this. What would have really elevated this guy to just pure amazing status, in my opinion, was include a second sword. 
one that is just half of the power sword that can clip to another one. That to me would have just absolutely completed the 1980s homage that this guy's going for. Now, they could have played it safe and just included both halves with this release in case they never got around to doing Skeletor. So he would you know, have a silver half and a purple half. Or just give him the silver half if they felt more confident that a Skeletor with the purple half of the sword would be coming down the road. And they could even give it the vintage style, you know, finger guard here, the grip guard. That would have been really cool. It's not something, you know, that ruins a toy by any means. In fact, like I said, a lot of people don't like the combining sword thing and would rather it be left out. But if we are going vintage, it would have been nice to go, you know, 100% instead of like 90 or 95% and just include that neat little Easter egg. Who knows, maybe the retail Skeletor will surprise us and he'll come with the two halves of the power sword. Then you can, you know, swap it in for this guy's. I have a feeling they're not going to do that because I don't think that was included in the Comic-Con set. But I will be a very happy camper if they go that little bit of an extra mile with Skeletor. Especially since he probably doesn't come with as many accessories as He-Man anyway. So that'd be a good way to flesh out the price point there. Now we get our Masterverse comparison shot. Here we get the first wave figure, our Revelation He-Man, done up in a somewhat more cartoony style than what I would personally prefer. And then we get the new Eternia He-Man, who's done up in a very realistic looking style with deep earthy colors, very realistic proportions, or, you know, comparatively realistic anyway. And he's a figure that, you know, pulls double duty as a reimagining of He-Man, as, you know, the Viking concept art He-Man, and then the more traditional look, which is how I have him displayed right now. Now, I'm just going to come right out and say it. I really hate the Revelation He-Man. Like... Just everything about him, the weird tones of color used, the, the super derpy, like, football jock face. I, I don't like it. Don't like it. <laughs> like, I, I do feel that this toy improves on this in every conceivable way. Like, there, there's nothing I think this toy does better than this guy. Just at all. <laughs> I'm sorry. Everything from the proportions, the colors used, even the shapes of, like, the weapons and everything... I just, I don't feel it. I, I feel that, you know, this was a really weak start to the Masterverse line. And, you know, that's not good because He-Man is the face of Master of the Universe. Obviously, he's going to be in the first wave of a new toy line, and that's kind of setting the tone. He did not set a good tone for me. I really wasn't sure if I wanted to keep going with Masterverse because when it was going really heavy in the Revelation stuff, I, I found myself kind of unimpressed and uninspired by it. And this guy right here just set that whole tone for me. Another way in which I feel this toy is really inferior is he doesn't include the axe. Now, I kind of understand why He-Man's axe was never really a big part of the Filmation cartoon that Revelation is supposed to be a sequel to. In fact, I'm not sure if he ever actually wielded it. He may have. There's like a bajillion episodes of the, of the old uh, He-Man Master of the Universe cartoon. But yeah, they didn't include it because he didn't use it in the show or anything. And like I said, they didn't even give him some sort of a loop or you know holster on his chest harness on the back to hold an axe or any accessory for that matter. So I found myself just really disappointed with this toy overall. And I guess it's a bit of a give and take because the new Eternia figure, while I think it is a much, much better figure than the Revelation one, he is missing the shield. And that's something I found to be just a little bit disappointing. Now, of course, you know, he's classic He-Man second, right? He's supposed to be new Eternia, Viking, reimagined He-Man who may not necessarily have a shield. And to be fair, he does get the cool little dagger in the boot, which does come out. So there is a trade-off there. But if you are looking to have a quintessential He-Man toy, one that, you know, encapsulates the original feel, the lack of a shield on this guy hurt him a little bit. Not a bad figure by any means, but makes him less of an ideal substitute for a vintage toy. And then, of course, we get this one. He has the same look, all the same accessories, as the original He-Man, and like I mentioned earlier, even has the corrected proportions to match. I mean, look how much wider and just bigger his chest is compared to these two. Now, is it a little bit less realistic? Kinda, yeah. Um, there, I mean, there are people that can get that big, but they're like the most elite of elite bodybuilders. And He-Man is supposed to be the strongest man in the universe, so it's not really inconceivable for him to be built like that. I mean, look at the Incredible Hulk. Right? That guy is absolutely massive. I mean, super unrealistically massive. And I don't think he's as strong as He-Man. I think He-Man's actually stronger than the Hulk. So, you know, I'm not too worried about keeping it super 
real life accuracy because He-Man is supposed to be larger than life. So I think this is a very positive change, especially if you are going for the original He-Man who is supposed to be like cosmically powered and incredibly strong. This guy gets away with being a little bit smaller because he's really just more of a guy, right? He's just an incredibly skilled warrior. You know, he's the savage He-Man, right? He's just a guy that's really good at what he does and is brave. And he can gain things that will give him power, but he himself is not like Superman. So I think there's a lot to be said for both of these figures. And being completely honest, as just a toy, as something to look at as a display piece, you know, something to admire the aesthetic of, I actually think I kind of prefer the new Eternia He-Man. Just because I like that far more realistic look. Like if they take this thing from a toy line and say, you know, what if we do this, but how it would look in real life? I, I really, really dig this guy. And, you know, I, I do prefer him a little bit over the more loud, almost cartoony nature of the vintage one. However, if you are looking specifically for something that reminds you of the old He-Man, this guy is leagues better. He just does everything he's supposed to do. I mean, he gets all the details right, even the ones that the Origins figure didn't get right. So, yeah, I mean, there's no comparison. Easily the best vintage He-Man, but for me personally, just the best figure of a He-Man that I've personally collected. Maybe the Classics ones are better, but this guy is just super cool to me. I love the details and all that. This guy, he's just trash. Utter trash. I'm gonna feed it to my dog. And this completes our look at the new 40th anniversary He-Man. Overall, I think this is a fantastic toy. Like, this is the He-Man I wanted when Masterverse was announced, instead of that just terrible, terrible Revelations figure they gave us. And, you know, it's not just because of, like, the Revelation aesthetic. It just wasn't a good toy. It was really disappointing in a lot of ways. This guy, I feel, just completely makes up for that. And he does a really great job of commemorating the 40th anniversary by going back to the basics. And it's really kind of shocking that in some ways he does a better job of that than the Origins toy, which was meant to be basically a recreation of the vintage toy. So this guy does a lot of things right. Like I said, the only thing that could really make him better is if he came with the half sword as like an optional accessory or maybe both halves. But again, like that's just wishful thinking on my part. I'm not even holding that against this toy. Because, again, a lot of people may not be crazy about that choice. Just a personal thing. But yeah, I mean, he's so complete. He's got the sword, the axe, the shield. They all look great. He's got the awesome colors. I love the new, just bigger, puffier chest that really screams, you know, strongest man in the universe. And I like that the chest harness is so much easier to remove. Because a lot of the times, those things are a real pain. Like, sometimes to the point where I'm kind of afraid to try to take them on and off. Because I'm afraid I'm going to break one of those straps. They are pretty thin, they're made of rubber, and over time that rubber will become more fragile. This guy is just a simple clasp that you pop and boom, it's off, and you can even just slide it down his arms without having to take anything off. I mean, it's it's really nice. Yeah, it's more prone to kind of popping open in the back, but as long as you're kind of careful when you're handling it and posing it, it shouldn't be too big of an issue. So yeah, I think if you're looking for like your ultimate, highly articulated, just classic, classic He-Man, this is the way to go. I think they really nailed it this time. I I'm really hoping that Skeletor follows, like at least do a Skeletor to match this guy. Maybe with the two halves of the power sword, I'm just saying, it would be nice. Uh, you know, go that far. Don't just keep Skeletor locked behind like some exclusive box set. He's too iconic for that, right? He's not some obscure character that, you know, maybe the most hardcore people would only want. So yeah, I'm really happy with this, and I think if you got your way to pick this up, you will be too. Whether you take it out of the box or even leave it in that fantastic packaging, I'm very confident you'll be satisfied with your purchase. Of course, that's just my take on this new He-Man. Now I want to know what you all think of this. Is this something that you're dying to get as a Motu fan? Is this like just the Masterverse toy of He-Man you've been wanting? Or do you not want this? Maybe you just have too many He-Man in your collection. Maybe the new Eternia or... Maybe the Revelation one does it for you, if you're weird like that. Any and all feedback is always welcome in the comments section. If you enjoyed this review, make sure to toss it a like. Let YouTube know you want to see more stuff like this. If you do want to see more like this, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell, so you always get a heads up when I post something new. I thank you for joining me for this look at the brand new Masters of the Universe Masterverse 40th Anniversary He-Man. And with all that said, I will see you next time.